So we're gonna do a review, my take, my friend Donovan's take of Gabe White's pistol class. This is my friend Donovan Moore. You guys have seen him in some of our S12 videos. Donovan owns Point One Tactics. That's right. Right here in Illinois by me. We don't tell people exactly where we're at, but if you wanna find us, whatever. Illinois. Uh, did I say that? No, I'm just, so oh, they can't yeah. find us. Yeah, exactly, Illinois. -ies. You and I both trained with Gabe last year. I only got to do one day, and uh, we brought him back out. We just spent a couple days with him. So we shot a ton of footage. We'll show you guys some clips of the class. Gabe's kind of interesting because most people that do what he does have websites and social media and all that, and he's kind of under the radar. And like, if you find him, you find him, and if you don't, you don't. So I told him we'd do like a professional review. Um, Wrong, wrong guys to pick to do. <laughs> wrong guys to pick to do that. Three major segments of learning. And the first one is when you work those counts. You like you have the four count draw. And you go okay. So day one. So when I draw, I do these things. One, two, three, four, and and you know there's all this segmented thing, and thing. You're just barely learning it. And then the next stage of learning it is it all turns into one motion. I draw the gun. Maybe kind of slow, but I will have you have one overall motion, and that's drawing the gun. And the last part is. You begin to do it moving your hands very quickly. And that's the stage that I judge all of you to be at or suitable for, because clearly everybody already has a decent draw, it's already built, and it looks to me, I don't see anybody going, thinking. Donovan, a front one tactics. The EOD commando. Out of the Gabe White class today. Working as Smith and Wesson. I teach new students. It's not the way I present the draw. This is the way I present the draw to all of you for where you are. Hey, up! Just to say where your hands are when you're drawing the gun. You're eating the cheeseburger, gotta draw the gun. You're picking grass off the wall, gotta draw the gun. You're pushing your loved one out of the way, time to draw the gun. Your you know, hands are down here, you draw the gun. The infinite start positions. Could be anywhere. You were fighting somebody, gotta draw the gun. Everybody's got to get a bunch of chances. So there was an important lesson there yeah. from both. So do you see both shooters begin to engage and then stop and abort the engagement process? Yeah. Stay on right. and keep the gun mounted yeah. until you know you have finished your task right. and then you can dismount the gun. But be Vinny. And get the task Mickey. for sure. Mickey. Right side, got it. That's correct. I don't know. It's by a lot. Here's a, here's the first thing that can really help people with established draws. A lot of times people are like this slow motion start, just this really pokey moving the hands thing. So especially helpful is if you have martial arts or boxing experience or something where you train to move your hands quickly, move your hands quickly, move your hands quickly, explode into motion. Explode into motion like you touched a hot stove. Uh, that's a Steve Anderson term, is you know, like you like you touched a hot stove. Touch the hot stove, you jerk your hand. Ow! Ow! You know, move like you touched a hot stove, explode into motion. Don't creep into motion with this slow. Okay, push the first shot way low, and then I watch the hits land, not in the A zone. That's one of the chief problems with watching the hits as they appear, is now I'm not aiming the gun as precisely, and then the hits don't appear where I wanted them to. So here's the drill. You're gonna start out with the unloaded gun. We're gonna get on the body target. We'll just work the body for simplicity's sake. We're gonna press the dry trigger. Hold the trigger back. Hold it back, don't let it go forward. Cycle the slide so that your hammer or striker are recocked and ready to reset. But see, everybody see how I'm still holding the trigger all the way back? I haven't let it go forward yet. Now, continuing to hold the trigger back. Regrip the gun, do that correctly. Make sure you're getting a consistent grip. Get back on the sights, tilt the muzzle in a simulation of recoil. Like however high you think your front sight moves when you fire your gun, put it that high. Your eyes are still pointed at the target spot. Uh, that was all preparatory. The actual drill is all at the same time, you're gonna drive the front sight back to the target spot as you reset and press the trigger. This is Gabe's top rock drill. So, start careful, get more aggressive as you go. Something like this. Something along those lines. There's just gonna be a way to kind of feel Four repetitions of the bill drill. Right now we're pushing it. You're 
reaching for the way you'd like to be able to shoot as opposed to the way that you can easily shoot right now. Four repetitions. And, and you can go through all four at your own pace. Up. There's an interpretation that you might kind of keep in mind as a generality as we do this drill. Ideally, your grip is confining the gun to pretty straight up and down movement, and so in the ideal world, you would see a pretty narrow strip of shots with a little bit of, it's going to have a little bit of dispersion straight up and down. to get the gun back to the target spot from here to here, very likely you're overdriving the gun. Very commonly, front side goes high, and when you're trying to bring it back, shove it, you end up shoving it a little low and then shoot a low shot. You might replace that thought of trying with a feeling of allowing the gun to come back to the target spot. Your subconsciously controlled grip stance and platform, it's gonna bring it back. Just allow it to come back rather than trying to bring it back. Trying to bring it back, a lot of times ends up pushing it low. Really beautifully done. You did great. Uh, that was really, really good. Really good job. That's exactly, you know, really awesome. But the other thing that may be going on is you may have some odd gap or tension in your grip or upper body shooting platform that's levering the gun to one, or pulling it or pushing it to one side or to the other side. And you may need to start working with the little puzzle pieces of, well, what if I move my support hand back this like five millimeters? Or what if I turn my elbow just this much and change the pressure in my upper body shooting platform? Or maybe I need to move my feet just a little bit, get my body tilted a little bit different way. That's where all those puzzle pieces kind of come into play. So if you're seeing high shots, probably need to be more patient. Low shots, probably need to quit overdriving the gun and instead just allow it to come back. Maybe trigger two. And shots left and right, there's probably something uneven in your grip or your upper body shooting platform. And then you start working with the puzzle pieces to try to solve that. But that rough diagnosis of errors, I bring it up not because it's exactly gonna be exactly right for each person, because it isn't, but it's so pervasive among skilled shooters. You know, typically those are the errors that you've got when it's skilled shooters. Uh, and, and we're gonna see that especially as we continue from this drill into the build drill. First, have a designated dry practice area where you dry practice and don't dry practice anywhere else. Don't be walking through your house and go, Light switch! <laughs> because impromptu drive practice without all the procedure at the front end to get all the safety safety layers in place, real easy to just have a mental mistake, pull out the loaded gun when you were, I thought it was unloaded, but it wasn't. Uh, have designated drive practice targets, and those are the only thing you drive practice at. Not random things like your computer screen, your mouse, your whatever else. You've got targets that you use, whatever they are. Whether it's little action figures that you camp out and pose behind a plant, that'd be a good creative way. I mean, seriously, that, that's, that's a great thing to use in dry practice. You can make them 3D and oriented like this. You gotta shoot them here. I mean, you can do some good stuff with little toy action figures. Straight tie. Great tie there. Uh, or paper targets or whatever they are, but have designated dry practice targets that are put away when you're not dry practicing and are not sitting there inviting you to go impromptu without all the safety. So don't use your kids toys. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No. Especially when they're holding them. So you got a designated dry practice area with designated targets that are put away when you're not actively using them. Before you enter the dry practice area, get the gun completely unloaded, make certain that it's unloaded, or switch to your dedicated dry practice gun, whatever you, you do there. 
enter the dry practice area and consciously choose to begin dry practice. Make a conscious decision that you're going to do that. Put up the dry practice targets. Do what you are going to do with the dry practice targets with a real safe direction behind them. Most of all, have a safe direction behind the targets you're going to use. Two Bravo in the head, I can live with that at 213 probably, but ideally need to, need to get him a little bit more careful there. So just to see what it was, um, splits were 21, 22, 23, 25, 28. So I got barely more care out of those headshots, which is, you know, they're, they're not in, so that's probably why. Clean in 237, that's, if I, or no, I have One Charlie. One Charlie, okay. Well, one Charlie 237, if I do that on the on it when, it, when it counts, I'll be happy enough. So I would like for it to be a little better, but I live with it. It's still terrible. Uh, if you make a mistake, the way if the worst happens and you make a mistake and somehow you manage to get ammo in the gun and ND the gun, at least no person will be hit with the bullet. Dry practicing in a not real safe direction is how little babies in their cribs and newlyweds get shot head because somebody shot a bullet through their wall and it went into the neighbor's wall and then whacked out the, the young bride. That is exactly how that shit happens. Don't let it happen. Good hits. That's the reason that there is a very small area where I live that I will drag practice because that area, this very small portion of the wall, has the whole earth behind it. And everything else doesn't. And I won't point the gun and pull the trigger on my gun, point it in any other direction in my place. Absent an emergency. When you're done, make a conscious decision to be done. Put the dry practice targets away, exit the dry practice area. Ideally, go do something else for a few minutes to help further get your mind out of the act of dry practicing, and then after that, reload your gun or put your real your, your loaded gun back on. Another mistake that can come out of that that's less related to the dry practice itself is accidentally walking out of your house with an unloaded gun in your holster. To avoid that, I would when you unload your gun and take your take out your ammo supply, put that in front of the door that you'll use to exit, so that if you forget and you open the door and it goes clunk into magazines you recognize oh yeah I better reload my gun before I leave so that would be a way to help avoid that uh, and I know that this is and that's that's kind of my uh, my overall take on dry practice yeah Doug. Dave what do you do because um, I know when you get to a level like yours there's a significant difference of whether that gun is weighted properly right oh, we're right. talking especially with your your base extension yeah. what do yeah, you do right. to mimic that weight yeah, yeah. you're right so what I do with that is uh, somebody, a, re a reloader making actual dummy rounds, cases, no primer, bullets, uh, heavy bullets so that they would have weight. And I have dedicated dry practice magazines that are only used for dry practice. And they have those dummy rounds. And then they have a bunch of brightly colored um, orange plastic uh, Glock brand uh, dummy rounds on top of that that are highly visible. So they're dedicated magazines that only have that stuff in them. They don't have anything else and because they're cases with actual bullets they have weight uh, and and the weight is important and that's but that's the way I duplicate it. All right. oh. We're going to work on fluidly moving around behind cover and shooting at an adversary down range of the cover and working with those line of sight dynamics. Working with proper ready position engagements. We're going to work with exposing, biasing our repeated exposures from higher to lower or from one side to the other side to attempt to exploit the pre-aiming behavior that is very common. We're going to work with defending ourselves while staying at a piece of cover against an adversary moving laterally one way or the other against us. And we're going to work on conducting an envelopment ourselves for the last exercise and defending a simultaneous one attacks, one defends uh, exercise at the end. We're going to takeaways for somebody that's looking for training. Uh, I know off the bat, it is not a beginner course. Absolutely, definitely not for the beginners. So 
most most of the guys you see on the IG, the Instagram, the Facebook, they they got their websites out and their videos of them with their sub second draws. Mm -hmm. and Gabe is not that guy. Gabe is very quiet, and it's one of those uh, individuals you either know him or you don't. And I don't think I would ever have known him if I it wasn't for Les, Kiss, right. Kiss yeah. Martoni, and he uh, last year invited us out to the course, which he hosted him. I'm glad you did this time. And uh, Gabe's an interesting fella. He can he can shoot the lights out. And the way he goes about it, it is not a beginner's class. It's not about loading and making ready. It's not about clearing and safing or malfunctions. It's about the entire culmination of the process. Um, very thought provocative, all the way from dry fire to, to the last sight picture. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an extremely good class, very valuable. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, I shot till I, I've wore, I'm, you I've were You were bleeding all over. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five spots that opened up in me. Part of that was because the gun I was carrying, I, I shot a SIG 365 in the course, which is part of what this video will be about. Uh, so a lot of manipulations with a little gun tends to bang on you. But um, the course is geared, as, as Donovan was saying, to higher level aspects of shooting. So there's a lot of drawing quickly and putting a lot of hits in targets quickly. I was re reviewing some of our footage and I was chuckling because there was long lengths of time where we just were 500 rounds into the trap, 500 rounds into the trap. And I'm referring to the whole line shooting, like build drills, just doing mag dumps after mag dumps. And there was reasons for it. Yeah, absolutely. And there were times where we were going back in the back of the range and we we couldn't even get one word in because all you hear is dot, 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 nonstop. And <laughs> yeah. And he's got that process of, of going from one skill set. So he, he bases his drills around four big drills. It's the build drill, the split build drill failure to stop in the immediate incapacitation drill and he builds up to that he gives you multiple multiple chances to shoot his drill mm -hmm. and then he you know he walks up and down the line gives you your individual feedback what to work on what he likes what he doesn't like and uh, it's it's hundreds of rounds until we get to those those final two tests which can be pretty intimidating yeah at least for me it was yeah for sure uh, two things we'll tell you what those drills are just so you in case you don't know and Gabe for those of you that don't know, and we should have said this off the gate, is a master class USPSA shooter from concealment. I know Boss. three guys that can do that. Les, uh, our friend Gabe, and um, Modern Samurai. Yes. The three of those dudes, and there might be some more guys out there, but that's a really high level of shooting ability. Not just the ability to shoot real fast, you have to be able to hit real fast. So his drills are drills that you would uh, see in a USPSA match or that would be applicable to defending one's self in reality. So Bill Drill, designed by Bill Wilson, seven yards, draw and fire six rounds into the A zone. So that's like, uh, what is it, six inches by 11 inches is that target zone. Then the split build drill. Yeah, so the split build drill uh, came up actually by from Gabe White and he took the uh, six rounds and split them up, not evenly, but four rounds to the center A zone, and then two rounds to the head, either a four inch circle or a three by five inch no card, which can be pretty demanding yeah. with those transitions. So it's points. not that whole square head box. It is not. It's a four inch circle or a three by five right. no card. Much, much smaller, more demanding. And then uh, 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 immediate incapacitation. So immediate incapacitation is just draw from the holster and then two rounds on the head. So his theory is there's gonna be a time or a time and place where we're not gonna be able to take that center mass shot. And we talked about that, whether it's a law enforcement or a military type of personnel, or it's you know that, that hostage worst case scenario in mm -hmm. your own home. Our so, friend Eric had to do that. Yep, so two, two rounds to the head. Uh, once again, we, he never utilized, on any of the drills, he never utilized the full head box. It was always either the four inch circle, which was always in our class, or you could also utilize the, the note card. Mm -hmm. Then the last one is the Failure to stop, mm -hmm. and the failure to stop is the traditional, what we call, you know, the Mozambique, two to the chest and one to the head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people look at those drills and they don't understand that it's not just a tactical application. It, and Gabe's careful to point that out. He's not assuming that somebody's gonna stand and let you shoot them in the face and then let you shoot them in the face again. He describes it as perhaps that first round glanced off of a skull, or you missed, or, uh, it didn't get the effect, but the idea is to be able to drive your gun back to the target and find the sights again. And that's a lot of what his class is about. Seeing sights, getting hits, doing it really fast. Yeah, shooting your sights without a doubt. One thing I took away from Gabe without a doubt was 
we always talk about seeing that sight picture and then if you're firing two rounds, everyone says, well, get that third sight picture. Mm -hmm. Get that, get that follow-on shot. Then, you know, scan, do whatever you need to do, put that weapon system away. To him, he shoots so well and so fast. The thing that stuck out to me was the video process. He, ah, I like that. He's yeah. like, I don't I don't want to see that one picture and that other picture. I want to see a multitude of pictures and turn it into a video and make that weapon just run very predictable mm -hmm. over and over again. And that stuck to me pretty strongly. Yeah, that pretty was strongly. a good it was a good analogy. So rather than just seeing flashes in time, I want to be able to see it in in motion. That made that made good sense. Yeah, and if you get a chance, check out Gabe Gabe White's website, and he has an amazing YouTube video of him. Wait, does he have a website now? So uh, I don't know if it's a website, but find his YouTube video, Gabe okay. White, it's Pistol uh, Shooting Solutions, and he's got him shooting those bowling bowling pins, pins hanging on strings. Yes, and it's a dark a dark bowling pin, a white bowling pin on movement, full explosion. You'll see some of the videos from Mickey's Instagram. Um, he brings that into place as far as shooting your sights immediately is breaking out of your stance and getting a front sight picture. So he's running laterally across the range. With two bowling pins hanging from a string. Hanging from a string. And they're, and they're, they're dancing around. Yeah, moving. they're bing, 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 bing. So you're talking anywhere from three to six inches in a blink of an eye and he's moving at a very good pace, yeah. being able to hit a target on demand. And he's choosing, not just blasting at him, he's picking the white one or the black one. Correct. Right? And he does it with blacked out sights in diminished light also, because you never know worst case scenario where you're going to be or what Remember you're what the distance was from I want to say yards? he was pushing anywhere from three yards out to ten. Okay. Pretty, pretty well uh, Yeah, it's some demand. really good shooting. And their bounce, those pins are this way, that way. They are. They mm -hmm. are, and they're constantly moving and swinging. And, He's hitting it on demand. It's mm -hmm. amazing to watch. One of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah. It, very analytical guy, super cerebral. Definitely not a class for beginners. Uh, what do we shoot, about 1,000 rounds? I think he said 951 rounds if you followed his exact course of fire. Right, which there's no way he could have because me and you held him up quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 951 total rounds, so be there ready to fire. If you happen to bring that tiny subcompact like Mickey here, uh, bring some gloves, bring another gun, you never know what's going to happen. That's true. That's true. Let, what, let's talk some of his standards so people understand the standards that he has set up for his course. So he, the four drills that Donovan just talked about, he uses as tests. So we shot him two times each. Yep. So eight all, total tests. Yes, eight eight total. So each drill, for, so four demanding tests, mm -hmm. and each one is shot twice correct. Um, and the whole thing behind it is because he is a master class shooter, as you stated, mm -hmm. from concealment. Everything is geared towards the concealment shooter. So he gives a, a quarter time of difference, basically a handicap for that shooter. Mm -hmm. So if you're running a production rig, you're not gonna get that handicap time, but he's got very demanding time. So I believe it's two seconds for the build drill. So if you are if you are running from concealment, you can get that within 2.25 to get his turbo run. That's to the, get the fastest run, yes. Then we have the failure to stop drill. So two to the chest, one to the head. And I believe that is in 1.7. So you're looking at 1.95. Draw, one, two, three. Yes, and he talks about what draw you should be at. He'll tell you whether you're, so the standards he has is a turbo pin, a light pin, a dark pin, and each one is broken down to, you should have a 1.5 second draw, or you should have a 1.1 second draw, or a one second draw with two, two zero splits, or mm -hmm. 0.5 splits if you're transitioning from the center mass to the head. So he breaks that down and gives everybody a good idea of where their skill set should be, which, yeah. is, which is pretty interesting. And he, do, and he demos all of it. The, yeah. Both times that I've been in class with him, he was able to shoot his standards to that high level, which he based those standards, he tells you in class, off of four grandmaster level shooters, uh, uh, Steve Anderson. Yep. Ben Stager. Ben Stager. Um, whew, I'm trying to think. I know, me too. Should be himself, because his standards are pretty. Uh, Rob Vogel. Robbie Vogel, yep. And then who was the last guy? I think it was those three. I don't think there was four. I think it was those okay. three. And he says they're at the level of grandmaster to master. They flirt that line. He takes all their documented times that he could find online. Yeah. And he said, wrote them all down, took the average, and said, this is where I want to be. And that was interesting also that I took from the class. And I did this with Les Kiss Martoni. It was, hey, how fast does he shoot? Where do I shoot? And then he talks about fixed mindset and growth mindset. Mm -hmm. And how do we get to that level comparing yourselves to, to other individuals that are better than you? Yeah, I took a lot away from that. that. that fixed mindset, like this is as good as I can do. The, uh, the interesting thing about that, talking about like Ben Stager, not to sidetrack, but that's if you look at Ben 
uh, Ben's first book, he talks about how he became a GM. And that's what he did. He sat down and said, okay, this is how fast these guys are drawing, how fast they're running these various drills. And then he broke them down and said, here's how fast I got to draw. Here's how fast I need to reload. Here's how fast I need to hit this target at this distance. And this can go into the weeds for people because you start applying this to fighting or tactics and it's not always applicable. But as I think we all would agree, if you can draw faster and hit more accurately, that's never going to be a hindrance when you're fighting somebody with a gun, right? Right, absolutely. I'm complete agreement. He put a lot of emphasis also on things like footwork, not in the sense of walk like this, but uh, exploding, moving, uh, hand speed. Yeah, so let's touch, I like to touch on that for a minute. The, the, the movements is exceptional because he lets you know exactly where you're gonna move, how you're gonna move, why you're gonna move. Mm -hmm. What you don't get from this class is you're not gonna come into this class and be like, hey Gabe, how do I draw from appendix? Or hey Gabe, how do I draw like you? He doesn't teach that. Yeah. He shows you, he says, okay, what do I need to do? And let's break it down. I need to clear my shirt. Okay, after I clear my shirt, I need to find that that positive master grip purchase on my weapon system. Then I need to join that support hand. And he, he tells you exactly what he needs to do, but he does not show you how he does his draw. This is not a class for somebody to learn that technique. Mm -hmm. You come into that class already with those fine skills, and he uh, brings it to the next level. Just talking, I would probably say my biggest takeaway, if I had one sentence to de describe his course, is if you are a good shooter, good in the sense that you know how to draw, can safely do administrative functions with a gun, you can reliably hit uh, uh, targets that are within reason. I'm not saying shooting aspirins out of the air, but if you can't shoot, uh, uh, a four inch target at seven yards reliably, don't go to this class because you're gonna have to shoot a four inch target really fast at seven yards. So if you can hit a target like that reliably, this is basically Gabe's training regiment to be able to do that on demand. So you would go to this course and it'd be like, hey, here's how Gabe trains. That's right. what it is. This is his training program that he does for himself broken down over, over almost 20 hours. Yeah, he said uh, 10 years of, of working on this. Mm -hmm. He says that right in his flyer. It's, hey, if, if you can't hit a six inch by six inch uh, size target on dominance at 10 yards, this, this class is not for you. You may get a lot out of it, but we are not gonna be uh, holding back for you. We're gonna be moving forward, which is straightforward to the point. He's letting you know, come prepared. As an instructor, I very much appreciated his dedication to keeping his timeline because you go to some courses and people lag behind and it's like well Bob or Sue is dragging so or Mickey and Donovan or Mickey and Donovan <laughs> and 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 then it kind of slows everybody down or somebody doesn't show up on time nope we're going get on the line let's go he and that's respectful for the people that paid and showed up and keep their mouth shut and also those that maybe came that were not we didn't have anybody like that that was not up to speed to be able to uh, be safe and proficient and stuff. We had a, a variance of folks, but I think we only had a few people in class that didn't get awarded one of his levels of pins. And nobody made a turbo in class. No, nobody made a turbo. The last time, Les was the only one that did. Les, I think Les shot some of the best standards he ever recorded in his class. Which, you know, the interesting thing is like, and I bring this up, Les is our friend, is Les Pepperoni online. He's a grandmaster shooter, was a nationally ranked shooter when he was really competing a lot. The, you, a guy like that goes to a course and it's an, an anomaly as far as data recording is concerned because those guys don't go to classes. Like, he, Les does his own classes like that, right? I mean, he's right. a grandmaster. I mean, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't like, like Julia Child's not going to cooking classes at, at the local community college. And that's, you've right. got a guy that's a, a, a world-class level shooter. Not that Gabe is not a world-class level shooter, but they are beyond the point of going to things that, that he's already learned. So, I, and I saw that when Les came to Frank Proctor's course, and, and I'm sure others, when you're at that level of, of ability, you know, what are you, you're, what are you, this there to show off less, huh? Yeah, I think you're at that, when you're at that point, you, you shoot so well, it's like, I'm gonna go to the course and... Just make people. Yeah, I'm the one, I'm gonna beat the crap out of Mickey and Donovan. Yeah. And then maybe I'll, I'll pick up a few things here or there. Or... In my opinion, for somebody looking in, in, in the courses that I've taken, and I've, I, try to, I try to do three or four a year as a student, 
of all of the courses I've taken, it's probably one of the most well organized courses I've taken. In a, in a long time. And there's not, not that other guys are disorganized. Well, disorganization, go ahead, finish it up. Disorganization is the enemy of safety. Absolutely. And I have copied that. I think it's a great, very simple way of, of codifying like the mess in a office or a, a, a work table. Usually those things are the precursor to some type of danger, which any good instructor or school should have some safety protocols, but he's a stickler for it. Even though we had a bunch of good shooters, he told all of us, you will not walk off the line until I say you can walk off the line. And some people have a hard time with that, but his, his business, his rules, his class, and that's how you maintain safety. Yeah, he does a great job. He runs a hot range, so we're not sitting there unloading and clearing and making mm -hmm. safe and loading up every two seconds. He runs a hot range, but he makes it, uh, he makes it known. This is how it's gonna be. There's no deviation from it, and if you do, you're gonna, you're gonna pay the man, and we'll handle it from there. Mm -hmm, Very mm -hmm. safe and well-ran. Yeah, it absolutely. Was, well, parting thoughts on a Gabe White class, what do you got? Okay, so parting thoughts, I would say, well, me and you had this discussion after the class. Mm -hmm. It was, why are we even in this class? Mm -hmm. Are we here to just kind of win that turbo pin, or are we here to take in that whole process and get better? So this is my second time taking Gabe White's class, and without a doubt, I took in massive amounts of more information. I will say this. Then you did the first time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I will say this, Gabe talks a lot. Yeah. Right. I, I think there's some things where you could pick up the pace a little bit and maybe want to shoot more or discuss things by showing. I'm a mechanical comprehension guy. We did guy. talk about that. I, I want to see visuals. Um, but he did a great job explaining, talking, and this time I took a lot more in. I think it's We maybe, probably had out of two days, four hours of lecture maybe. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I think it's, I took more in as a more well-established shooter, learning from more Scott Jedlinski, Lass, yourself, all around. Well, thank you. Oh, absolutely. It's, you, you learn more as you, like I said, it's not a beginner shooter. Mm -hmm. you, you gotta be advanced, you gotta be in that thought process already, and you'll get so much more out of it. That's a good point about his uh, uh, lectures. If you are not the kind of person that can sit for 45 minutes straight and pay attention, it might not be your kind of learning environment because when you get to a higher level of skill like that, you, there may be some deeper, thicker, meatier concepts that require, for example, his discussion on movement. That was probably his longest uh, 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 lecture of the day. I think it was close to an hour. And what it is, is he, he kind of culminates the theory that he bases his training on, on movement. Uh, somewhat, uh, some of it is, is tactics of movement. Some of it is the physicality of movement. Then he brings in the mindset. He has mm -hmm. a speech on mindset that's wrapped in there. He has a great speech, gives you goosebumps. If not you, I enjoy then it. who? I, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I enjoyed not, that very and much. He's, basically tells the, the students, if it's not you that does something to intervene, then who? And that's a point we all have to come to on, on our own, but that's about an hour long discussion block and there's a lot of good information there, but we talked about this with him. It said, hey, you know, it's kind of a long lecture. And he said, hey, this is kind of like really important, heady material. If you can't handle it, maybe you shouldn't be in a, you know, alpha level class instead of a, right. a beginner class. Or, or putting yourself in that position to carry every day. Mm -hmm. He talks about the incident in, in Texas mm -hmm. and about the slain officer. And that was his, one of his other also long lectures on cover and concealment and his mm -hmm. introduction to that. And yeah, you gotta be prepared, bring a chair and sit down and enjoy it and listen to him and absorb it, take it in. You may never hear it again or it may save your life. He, another good thing, uh, Drew, would you grab out of my range bag there on the, so I'm not gonna go through all of this, but there's, I've been to a lot of training and a lot of times about the only paperwork you see from anybody is uh, a waiver. And there's a lot of guys that don't even do that. This has all your notes basically, so you don't have to take notes. So if you're the kind of person that's a consummate note taker, I went through this and it does have a lot of the things that I would have taken as notes. And I made some notes myself. Uh, we at Carry Trainer have a course curriculum, but this is cool too. It takes time and I can appreciate, Drew knows because he did a lot of the work with ours. It took us months to come up with, with one 
curricula like that. So for him to have that, you know he put in some time and effort. And, and then you are also you have the ability to take that away, have something tangible that you can go back to. Yeah, absolutely. Like if it took a year, like we, we didn't see him for a whole year. So if when I looked over that packet, it had his sights meet trigger one, sights mm -hmm. meet trigger two, and his dry firing process. And right in there, it talks about his refinements. So like I said, he's not there to teach you how to draw, but he's there to refine your skill set. He'll help you get that that coasting motion, or he likes to call, you know, that sudden quickness and then that burst to the stop. Mm -hmm. He helps you take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you are a skilled shooter wanting to kick it up a notch, wanting to go to a deeper level of thought where you can start to come up with concepts and ideas for training, I'd check out Gabe White for sure. You mentioned Scott. I've not personally trained with with Scott. I've never heard a bad thing about him. Uh, Scott Jedlinski is another dude that's a master class shooter. We'll probably in this video throw a, a, a couple of links up to some of these guys, but if you're there, this is a guy that'd be worth checking out. Watch the videos that we put in with this video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I think you should. And then look for this guy. You'll see him some more. He'll, you'll definitely see him again at the next S12. Looking forward to it, absolutely. Great shooter. Uh, he's got a, a very good work ethic. He's the guy that stays late, sweeps up, cleans up. He's the guy that makes sure that you've got a snack if you need one. Hey, you too. Thanks for that guacamole the other day. Avocado. Avocado. Actually. Yeah, you gotta good. always have something to eat, otherwise you get sad. He bought me lunch. I, re I get hangry. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta feed, I gotta feed the monster here right here. If you guys have questions on any of the stuff that we talk about in this video or any, send us a message to training at carrytrainer.com. Happy to try to help if it's a legitimate question or concern. If you'd like us to come to your area, send a message again to training at carrytrainer.com and we can see if we can make that happen. Carrytrainer.com has all of the class dates that are up. Hope to see you at a class. Be well, tell somebody you love them. Don't be a dickhead. Cool, man. Come from Chicago a couple days ago and it was like feet of snow, blowing cold, and we're down here now in sunny Texas at Black Tree Ranch. This is one of the coolest places we've shot yet, been all over the country, and this is a dynamite place. You guys keep an eye out for it. Uh, we're happy to be down here. We're happy to be with Jay from Disciples of Iron. And we're out here, we're gonna do some fun stuff. I decided, just after putting these clothes on, I kind of felt like stronger, faster, better. It's basically like I'm on some type of like steroidal speed slash like uh, like protein drink, something like Shinobi drink, you know? So we're gonna load up some of Super Bell's ammo. We've got their Plus P, uh, 1,313 feet per second, 38 special, and some of their 90 grain, 1,500 feet per second. We're gonna do our fun one-arm push-up drill and see if the Disciples of Iron Clothing makes us better, stronger, faster, like Jay tells all of his <laughs> customers. Here we go, range high. We'll start with the 38. Pat Mack, who is Pat Mack? Never met that guy. Okay, so there was a couple misses there. And I'm gonna blame it on the over, over pressure of the Super Vel. I'm not like manly enough to handle it. I'm gonna switch over to the Wilson Combat. Try that out. Switch hands. Okay, here we go. Eka. All right. Perfect. At 38, man, I was having a hard time with that. Somebody else want to try? Yeah, man. And go. Okay. That was a lot. Damn.
What'd you think of that Super Vel? Awesome. Yeah, stuff moves. Yep. Super Vel, super awesome.